Alright, this is the one everyone needs to watch. For a long time now, people have been asking me, how did I choose the aircraft that I purchased? Well, I can tell you for a fact, it's, it wasn't that easy. I had a look at several aircraft and I considered different types of aircraft as well. I quickly eliminated a couple of them, but I was left with two to choose from. And after test flying them, I can tell you I still had no idea which one to go with. I was driving home from a week's holiday after test flying the aircraft and I just didn't have a clue. I came home and I sat down and I thought, how do I decide? Well, I've come up with a solution, as I did then, and I'm going to show it to you now. I call it the decision matrix. Yes, you'll be able to make an emotional and logical decision based on all the factors you can think of and dream of. And hopefully this will help someone else out. I mean, there's nothing like making the wrong decision and then regretting it later. You're stuck with that decision. You don't want to do that. It probably cost a lot of money and a lot of time investment as well. So you don't want to have to go through all that process again and you don't want to have to lose at the end of the day. So whatever decision you make, you're stuck with it. And hopefully it's a good one. Coming up now in this flying adventure, Okay, so do I regret my purchasing decision? No, I am completely happy with it. Fortunately, I worked out the decision matrix before I made my decision, and now hopefully you can see how I came up with that decision and why I ended up with the aircraft that I did. Everyone will come up with a different answer to how they come to the decision that they make. Are you making a huge decision? An expensive one? I'm going to show you how to make it easier. I cannot tell you how many times I have been asked why I chose the aircraft I purchased over the other available options. It was a difficult decision at first. At first. A lot of factors go into making a huge buying decision like this. After you pay your money, you're stuck with your decision and there are always compromises to be made. No decision will be perfect in every way. I only looked at new aircraft options, including two microlights, a gyrocopter, and a bushcat ultralight. I was able to quickly eliminate the latter two options, but I now had to decide on which of the two microlights. That was hard, really hard, at least without real good data. The answer? First, collate all the information, logical, factual, and emotional. Then score it, and finally, out pops the answer. Another advantage of the system is it will really help you understand your choices better, specifications, performance, and many things you never even considered before. You will research and learn so much by doing this. So how does it work? Okay, so we're looking at the spreadsheet of the decision matrix and a quick uh, layout guide here. It says at the top, score each choice based on spe uh, specification ranking. So put a one for worst and three for best. Along the top here, how it matters to you choice one, two, three. So I've just, we're gonna use an example of say cars, buying a car. We've got a red car, blue car, white car. Just as a description, okay? Don't worry about that too much. Now, in this first column, we're going to write all the things down here that matter to us. And they will be, for example, I've only used a few here. Price, fuel consumption, insurance, color range, and servicing costs dimensions of the car, load capacity, seating. Now you can put top speed, you can put towing capacity, you name it. But for this example, that's what we're going to do. Now in each one of these columns, you're gonna look up the specifications. Um, emotional ones in here, I guess, could be color range. Um, it could be, do you like the car? So I haven't got, well, let's put one in. So let, do you like the way it looks? 
okay? And you can then rank, this is what you do is red, the red car, do you like the red car? No, I hate it, so you put a low score. Do you like the blue car? Yeah, that looks really good. And the white car? Well, I don't really care. However, if the white car was okay too, you could say, yeah, I really like that one too. You can put the same number if you want to, it doesn't matter. But you sort of want to rank them, okay, from best to worst. So we'll leave that as a two. So if you go through all of these things that I've done, you can see that we've got price, as I said, I've just put numbers for each of the column. Now we're not there yet, this is only part of it. That is more or less the specifications part of the whole spreadsheet. If we go across to the next column, we've got importance. How important is are these, um, let me just zoom out a little bit. How important are these different selections when it comes to you choosing your whatever it is you're buying? Computer, house, boat, car, airplane, helicopter. Um, camping vehicle, caravan, I don't know, um, SUV. So how important is the price? For me, I've just put in here as an example, one, it's a low priority. But then again, you might say, well, actually price is a big factor. You have to put one to three in these situations. Importance one is low and three is high, very important. So you could put not so and very important as your um, choices there. Fuel consumption, oh yeah, I don't really care. It sort of doesn't matter either way. Insurance, oh yeah, uh, I've got some problems with my insurance. Insurance premiums are very important to me. Color range, yeah, don't really care too much. Servicing costs, uh, yeah, a bit of a consideration. Dimensions, oh, I haven't got much room to store this, so the size of the vehicle is very important. Load capacity, well, I wanna carry as much stuff as I can, or do I? No, I just wanna to get to and from work, so size isn't really a, load capacity is not a big deal, I'm not carrying a whole lot of things. I might pick up a few things from the grocery shop. So as you can see, it's very emotional, it's very dependent on your circumstances as to how you're going to complete the spreadsheet. How many seats are there? Do you need a lot of seating? Do you not need a lot of seating? Is this important to you? So seating, if you need more seats, it's important. So let's say, oh look, okay, I'm using it just for a bit of commute. If it's got two seats, I'm happy. So let's just put an average kind of a score there. Do you like the way it looks? And if that's really important to you, then again, put three, otherwise just put one and who cares? So what it then does, if you look at these, uh, the score matrix, so you don't edit this part of it here, you can look at how I've got this. You can see a whole series of numbers here now. And what it's done is if we look at the first one, this is number one. So this is choice one, the red car, number one, three. And how I've done this is we've taken the um, characteristic uh, ranking specification and multiplied it by the importance. And that's why we get three. One times three is three. Three times three is nine and two times three is six. So you can see in this category of price, the second choice got the highest score because we gave it a three here and it was important to us. So if we had to put a one, it's now not important to us but it still gets a higher score because it's got a three there. If you however go down to here and say fuel consumption is, um, is very important to us, that won't, that'll shift everything up. But if we switch some numbers around and said, okay, this is now three and this is now one, you'll see that things start to swap around a bit. So really, it, it really does depend how you filled out the sheet with the specifications and you have to get those, they are accurate things, except for things like the emotional ones. You have to get those off the manufacturer, unless they're emotional to you. And you also have to get, uh, then it's your emotional part where you put in the importance. What then happens? How do you know which one's best for you? Well, we go up to this top line, the scores. We've got a 29, a 48, and a 25. The 48 wins. The blue car is the winner. That means that what was important to us, or, or the better, well, you can look at the importance. Price wasn't important, but the fuel consumption was, the insurance was, the dimensions were. And what it's done is it's averaged it all out. Now, of course, as I said, that may not be the answer you wanted to see. You might have wanted the white car. 
therefore you probably didn't really need to do this. However, it does give you an idea of whether or not the specifications that you put in here, uh, if it comes up on the same um, choice, choice three, if it had to come up on choice three here, and that was your preference in the first place, then it's a clear winner. If it wasn't a clear winner, then you need to really step back and look at really what, what you want to do here. Have you accurately filled out the importance and um, have you accurately filled out the specifications? So, highest score wins. Number, this 48, blue. You, um, you might prefer long fuel range. You saw all that. You know, all the different things that go into making a decision are scrambled when they're in your head. But when you put them down on paper and look at it logically, and even use some emotional uh, kind of aspect to calculate um, the outcome, it really hopefully comes together. Now the thing is, don't just use the decision matrix as your final decision. Try to also consider it from your heart, from your gut instinct, and from your head, from the outside, and make sure that the decision matrix came up with a solution that is right for you. If it didn't, and you still want one of the other options instead, well maybe that's the option that you really wanted in the first place. And nothing will ever change that, because whatever you purchase, you'll be stuck with, and you don't want to regret it. Just be happy to know the limitations of whatever decision you make. No option, no choice that you make will be perfect. There will always be compromises. So don't forget, and always remember to get out there and go and have a great flight.